murder in the first degree after deliberation, Alexander Boyk. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count three, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Jesse Childress. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count four, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Gordon Cowden. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count five, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Jessica Gawi. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count six, murder in the first degree after deliberation, John Larimer. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count seven, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Matthew McQuinn. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count eight, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Michaela Medic. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count nine, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Veronica Mosher Sullivan. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count 10, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Alex Sullivan. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count 11, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Alexander Teves. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count 12, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Rebecca Wingo. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life in prosecutive. And adding them all up, I believe the total comes out to 12 life, life sentences without the possibility of parole consecutive to each other and consecutive to 3,312 years in the Department of Corrections. Do the people agree with that? Yes, actually, it's 3,318, excuse me. All right, 3,318. So, so the record is clear. It's 12 consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. And then those life sentences are also consecutive to 3,318 years in the Department of Corrections. I, I realize that I have imposed the maximum sentences. And I somebody yesterday uh, said, Judge, I want to make sure that whatever sentences you impose, that you are 100% sure that they are just and fair. And 
I am 100% sure that these are just and fair. I want to make it clear that it is the court's intention that the defendant never set foot in free society again. The intention of my sentences is that he spend every single day of the rest of his life in prison and that he be imprisoned without the possibility of parole. If there was ever a case that warranted the maximum sentences, this is the case. One of the victims yesterday said the defendant does not deserve any sympathy. I wholeheartedly agree. The defendant does not deserve any sympathy. And for that reason, the court imposes the maximum sentences that the court can impose under the law. Is there anything else at this time on behalf of the people? Any objection to that? Okay. 1,132 days of pre-sentence confinement credit. Is there anything else from the people? Anything else from you, Mr. King? No, you're right. All right. Sheriff, get the defendant out of my courtroom, please. Thank you.